Overview for Ecclesiastes Purpose To record the wisdom preacher's own experiences and reflections on the meaning of life and to lead the younger generation into the path of true wisdom. Author The Preacher, the Son of David, King in Jerusalem Ecclesiastes 1.1 Although generally accepted to be Solomon, the writer never discloses his own name. Date written most likely during Solomon's aging years, about 955 to 931 BC, since it is clearly the work of a mature individual. To whom written, though not specifically stated, internal evidence indicates it was directed toward the young men of Israel. Unique Features The title Ecclesiastes does not appear in the original manuscripts. It comes from the word translated preacher in the first verse. In Hebrew, the word is goheleth, meaning a presiding officer or one who speaks to an assembly, school, or religious body such as a synagogue. In the Septuagint, the translation of the Hebrew Bible into Greek, the Greek term ecclesiastes was used from the root word ecclesia, meaning assembly. That term was carried over into the English translation as the name of the book. Literary Style Ecclesiastes is one of five wisdom books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon, in the Old Testament. These books represent a major shift in style from the historical books which precede them. The content of Ecclesiastes is not logically or tightly organized. Rather, the book is a series of impressions, observations, positions, and emotional responses which fluctuate between faith and pessimism. The book is particularly notable for its iconic phrases, Vanity of vanities, all is vanity, There is no new thing under the sun, and He who increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Solomon's stylistic methods are similar to methods used by teachers of his day. He employed literary forms that were also utilized in Proverbs and Job, such as proverbial sayings, admonitions, parables, allegories, and rhetorical questions. Setting Solomon ruled Israel for 40 years and during his reign, the nation enjoyed a period of peace and prosperity. During this time frame, the nation of Israel was respected throughout the known world more than at any other point in its history. However, foreign influences, religions, and cultures began to filter into the nation which had been commanded to remain separate from the world and dedicated to the Lord. God gave Solomon the opportunity to observe and explore every avenue of earthly life. Since royal power, prestige, wealth, and every conceivable pleasure were at his disposal, Solomon could and did gratify every desire. In Ecclesiastes 2.10 he stated, And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. However, in spite of all his exploits and achievements, the predominant tone of this book is one of futility. Other than following God and his plan for mankind, Solomon concluded that all is vanity and vexation. No created good can satisfy the soul, and happiness is to be found in God alone. Jewish tradition states that Solomon would gather together the young and old before the temple and instruct them regarding the vanities and errors which would lead them away from God. Even to this current day, the book of Ecclesiastes is read in Jewish synagogues during the Feast of Tabernacles. Ecclesiastes 1.1 through 2.26 Devotional Focus Verse Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and, behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Ecclesiastes 2.11 Barbara Hutton, 
granddaughter and heiress of the tycoon Frank W. Woolworth, the founder of a chain of retail stores, was often portrayed in news reports as a lucky young woman. On her 21st birthday in 1933, she inherited $42 million, making her one of the wealthiest women in the world. During her lifetime, she had mansions built around the world, including a house in London's Regent Park and a luxurious Japanese-style palace in Cuernavaca, Mexico. She bought old master paintings, important sculptures, and valuable jewelry, including the 40-carat Pasha Diamond. Her lavish spending habits often put her in the spotlight, and many people followed her extravagant lifestyle with fascination. If wealth and publicity could have brought happiness, she would have been a very happy woman. However, she was not happy. Barbara married and divorced seven times, attempted suicide, and frequently appeared drunk in public. At times, she would give total strangers expensive gifts and money to stay the night with her because she did not want to be alone. Although she had everything her heart could desire in terms of material goods, emptiness and loneliness seemed to fill her life. At her death in 1979, it was reported that only about $3,500 was left of her fortune. A movie made about her life a few years after her death called her a poor little rich girl. Barbara Hutton certainly could have identified with the author of Ecclesiastes, who described pleasure and material prosperity as simply vexation of spirit. Some translations render that phrase chasing of the wind, and Barbara was no more successful at attaining happiness from position, pleasure, or possessions than one would be in attempting to catch the wind. Where are we looking for satisfaction? A good starting point for finding the answer to that question is reviewing where we invest our time, energy, and resources. We want to make sure that we are not chasing the wind, but are focusing on what will bring lasting fulfillment, something that is found only in God. Background Information The book of Ecclesiastes begins with the author identifying himself as the preacher, indicating that his words were intended to give instruction. The Hebrew word goheleth, translated preacher, means a person who speaks to an assembly, school, or religious body. While the writer never disclosed his own name, he identified himself as David's son and the king, so he is generally accepted to have been Solomon, king of Israel. In verse 2, Solomon stated his theme, all is vanity. The Hebrew word for vanity means emptiness, something that is transitory like a vapor or a breath, vain or useless, and the repetition was for emphasis. The writer was saying that life's secular or earthly efforts and activities are meaningless because they pass away so quickly. This establishes the tone of futility that is characteristic of the book. In verses 4 through 18, the vanity of life is illustrated by nature. Generations come and go, and the cycles of nature continue. Everything a person does has been done before, and what a person accomplishes is soon forgotten. Earthly wisdom alone, though sought diligently, is not enough, for it cannot correct all that is crooked and wanting. The more one learns, the more sorrow he has. In chapter 2, the writer recounted other areas where he searched for meaning and profit. He set himself to try pleasure, verses 1 through 3, looking to amusement and wine, although not to excess, for he remembered wisdom in this matter. Then he pursued building and wealth, verses 4 through 11, constructing houses, vineyards, gardens, and irrigated orchards. He had servants and riches, anything he wanted, and his focus was completely on himself. 
Yet when he looked at all he had done and accumulated, it did not bring satisfaction. Next, Solomon considered wisdom and folly, verses 12 through 17. He perceived that wisdom was better as light excelleth darkness, but the advantages were short-lived. The lifespan of both learned and unlearned individuals ends at the moment of death. The writer observed that once a man died, he did not know whether the one who inherited the wealth he had worked so hard to obtain was using it wisely or not. Such thoughts brought despair to the writer and caused him to lose sleep. Finally, Solomon noted that satisfaction in life comes only from God, verses 24 through 26. He realized that people should enjoy their food and drink and also their labor, but this would happen only when they recognized that God made it possible. Verse 25 could be translated, For who can eat and who can enjoy apart from Him? God decides everyone's circumstances in life. He gives those who follow Him wisdom, knowledge, and joy. However, if a person labors only for earthly things, his efforts eventually will be worthless to him. Conclusion A person who searches for satisfaction in earthly things eventually will find his efforts worthless, for true satisfaction cannot be obtained through prosperity or pleasure. True fulfillment can only be found in God. Ecclesiastes Chapter 1. The Words of the Preacher, the Son of David, King in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the Preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth for ever. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north, it whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full, unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor, man cannot utter it, the eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. I the preacher was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven, This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and, behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem, yea my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I gave my heart to know wisdom, and to know madness and folly, I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 2. I said in mine heart, Go to now, I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure, and, behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. I made me great works, I builded me houses, I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kind of fruits. I made me pools of water, to water there with the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house, 
also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold, and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces, I get me men singers and women singers, and the delights of the sons of men, as musical instruments, and that of all sorts. So I was great, and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem, also my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired I kept not from them, I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and, behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. And I turned myself to behold wisdom, and madness, and folly, for what can the man do that cometh after the king? Even that which hath been already done. Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly, as far as light excelleth darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness, and I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. Then said I in my heart, As it happeneth to the fool, so it happeneth even to me, and why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart, That this also is vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool for ever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man? As the fool. Therefore I hated life, because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me, for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. Therefore I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is in wisdom, and in knowledge, and in equity, yet to a man that hath not labored therein shall he leave it for his portion. This also is vanity and a great evil. For what hath man of all his labor, and of the vexation of his heart, wherein he hath labored under the sun? For all his days are sorrows, and his travail grief, yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This is also vanity. There is nothing better for a man, than that he should eat and drink, and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw, that it was from the hand of God. For who can eat, or who else can hasten hereunto, more than I? For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom, and knowledge, and joy, but to the sinner he giveth travail, to gather and to heap up, that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit.